This is the Weather Extreme video for Friday the 13th, the morning edition. I'm James Spann, Alabama's weekend looking pretty good, while some serious weather will likely be brewing to the west. We'll get in there and talk about it. We'll check some of the sky cam shots around the network this morning at the ridiculous hour of 5 o'clock. Who'd be awake at this hour? There's a look at downtown Birmingham from the Daniel Building. There's downtown Jasper from the King Building in Walker County. And quick peek at the Alabama Gulf Coast as the sun is getting set to come up. Weather down there looks good this weekend in case you're beach bound there. Here might be a shower by Sunday in spots, but most of the weekend should be dry. All right, the trough that brought the cool air is moving away. We'll be under ridging today. Weather looks great. Big trough in the west. That'll be uh, evolving into an upper low over the uh, southwest United States, producing mountain snow out there and a big severe weather event possibly for the southern plains. Peak of temperatures this morning, mostly in the 40s. Cold spot Fort Payne, they've got 39. And the weather warms up nicely over the weekend with highs maybe in the low 80s by Sunday. Here's a watch warning map. Still some freeze and frost issues over the east. Snow issues out west for some of the mountains like the Sierra Nevadas of California. Well, let's look at the convective activity. This is the severe weather outlook later today and tonight. The standard slight risk over much of Oklahoma, Kansas, and the adjacent states. But this is the big story. Day two tomorrow on Saturday, a high risk out for parts of Oklahoma and Kansas. And a high risk on a day two outlook is very rare. Uh, SPC did some coordination with weather service offices and uh, places like Dodge City and Oklahoma City and Wichita for this. And there's a moderate risk all the way from near Wichita Falls, Texas, up to Omaha, Nebraska. And then the slight risk goes as far north as Des Moines. And what's amazing is, is the percentages uh, on a day two, a 60% chance of severe weather within 25 miles of a given point. That's unbelievable. And in the discussion, the SPC guys are calling this a high-end, life-threatening event. I don't know if they used such strong wording before April 27th last year on the Day 2 Outlook or even on the Day 1. Uh, so we'll see how this whole thing evolves. And we'll take a look at modeling here in a minute. And this is uh, Day 3, which is Sunday. The uh, standard slight risk to the west and also up north around Wisconsin. And we note there is an enhancement in that Day 3 Outlook for uh, eastern Texas and parts of western Arkansas. So it's going to be a very busy weekend, severe weather-wise, but uh, this is the day four through eight outlook, and nothing shows up. No organized severe weather, and, and again, we, we agree with that. We just don't think we have a big issue here when all that arrives in Alabama early next week. Thank goodness. And there's the rain for the next five days, valid through Tuesday evening of next week. The heavier rains over northwest Alabama, and the amounts are much lighter as you go farther south and east. Let's take a look at the uh, GFS. This is the OZ run, valid at 1 o'clock this afternoon at 500 millibars. You can see the big upper low evolving out west. Down below that, a beautiful day here. Uh, both the NAM and the GFS are at 76, bright, sunny weather. Tomorrow, there's your big trough in the west. Let's go to jet stream level. This is at 200 millibars. You can see that jet max uh, rounding the base of the trough coming out toward the southern plain states. And down below that, there's a sub-1,000 millibar surface low over northeast Colorado. And the gulf is wide open. Dry line coming in, that jet stream punch. It, it's all there. There's no doubt. You know, this could be a big high-end event. Uh, of course, always one of the big questions out there is going to be the cap, the capping inversion. When will it break? How long will it hold? Uh, you know, the, the little mesoscale features of this thing, you don't know about that until the day of the event, until this thing lines up, you know, tomorrow afternoon. So it'll be very interesting to watch that from a distance. But here, a great day, partly to mostly sunny with a high around 80. Sunday, now moisture begins to come back, and you see some green on here, but uh, I'd say any showers would be very isolated because of the ridge. Uh, we might mention a slight chance of a shower Sunday afternoon, but most of the day should be dry. Uh, the surface low is over northwestern Iowa, still 996 millibars with the most active convection off to the west. Monday, the GFS wants to bring some convection in here, but everything, of course, you know, the, the upper low the, or the surface low is so far north, the dynamics are weaker. You know, that's not a severe weather look. And then Tuesday, it's actually got the bulk of the rain beginning to move out of here by Tuesday evening. 
but we'll check the uh, European on Tuesday, and it's slower, and I think that's the right solution. I think that's going to be the target day. We'll mention a chance of showers and thunderstorms Monday, the better chance Tuesday. And again, the severe weather threat here looks minimal based on this data. And then uh, Wednesday, back to the GFS, dry air begins to move into north Alabama as we go partly sunny. Here's Thursday. Looks calm and pleasant. Uh, really, the thickness values are still pretty high. That would suggest a high around 80. There's no cool air involved. And a week from today, the core westerlies are north of us, and that would be just warm and dry and quiet. We'll check the end of the forecast. April 28th. Hey, look at that negative tilt trough west of the state. And again, that's suggesting a big severe weather event for the southern plains. Just looks like this will be maybe their year for active you know, tornadoes while Again, I just wonder if our the worst weather of the season for us is over. What we had back in early March, we don't know that yet, but uh, uh, it looks at least quiet, severe weather-wise here for the next couple of weeks, and that's a very good thing. That's it for the Weather Extreme video this morning. We'll have notes on the blog next video here by 3.30 or so today. And don't forget to catch us on ABC 3340 on the live stream or on the television side this evening at 4, 5, 6, and 10 o'clock. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, and God bless. The first thing you've got to understand, you cannot rely on an outdoor siren. You cannot hear those inside a home, a building, a church. It won't work. You've got to get something inside your house. That's a weather radio or maybe a smartphone app. We work with a company that's developed a wonderful weather radio app for Android phones and iPhones. It knows where you are, and if you're in a tornado warning polygon, you get the warning. And if you're not, you don't. It's an effective device, and it's a great way to be sure you get the warning.